Yes lads, Bailey here. So today I've got the 4222 formation breakdown and custom tactics. Um, this formation I find is a very, very uh, effective formation this year. It's almost a bit of a mixture of a 4-4-2 and a 4-2-3-1 in terms of the fact, you know, the Y players um, for the 4-4-2, you know, a bit more attacking in this formation and obviously sent them into more defensive, but then you could compare it to the 4-2-3-1 but you know you have your cat instead of a cam you have your striker but yeah it's a very very good formation we'll be breaking it down um, with sorts of players who suits these sort of positions and the custom tactics what work well with this formation um, if I sound a bit different it's because I've got a new mic I'm trying to still find the best settings for it but I think these ones should be alright all for now but um, yeah we'll jump into the custom tactics in just a sec Right then, so as per usual, we've got five custom tactics which you could use for this sort of squad. Um, again, pretty much every single one of these balanced ones for now until you know there's a patch which changes out. This is kind of the most default sort of custom tactic I'd go with on this sort of um, sort of squad. The only difference you might notice from the other videos is players in the box, but we'll get to that in a sec. So for uh, the defence, I'd have it on balanced. Uh, width, if you're new, I don't like to really play around with width too much. So I keep that pretty much on five most of the time, apart from tension the attack, uh, like very, very ultra attacking ones, I might switch it up. Um, the depth I have on three, I find if you have it any higher with how the game's currently being played, you'll be caught out a lot more in the counter attack especially. So having three depth, I'd find is pretty well balanced. It allows you to get out of your own half uh, when you win the ball back um, and your sentiments not be you know right on the edge of the 18. Uh, of, your, of your own 18 even um, and it allows your team to pretty much be a bit high up the pitch so you can counter attack your opponent and stuff like that but also if you have it on one when you're going into a, like depth one when you're going into a game or saying you'll find you're, you're just pinning yourself um, pinning your back against the wall from the get go to be honest so I'd say depth three is probably the, the, the um, most ideal one for you know like a default sort of custom tactic which is transferable from squad to squad uh, for the offensive styles, I would keep it on balanced again. It's just, you know, like, like it says there, the team will pretty much maintain its formation. You won't have be uh, won't have players blitzing up the pitch. At, say you had fast build-up on, that will be what you notice. But you won't be, um, you know, you won't have players, you know, constantly dropping back, uh, making passing angles, even though that's effective in the possession. This sort of, you know custom tactic you don't really want it you just want a bit of everything so balance is perfect for that obviously width again don't play around with that players in the box now i usually have it on three so that'd be both your central strikers but after playing around um with the custom tactics a little bit i find having uh, it on five so you have three players in the box is more effective uh, especially for this formation anyway uh, we'll get into why in just a sec when i show you the instructions corners and free kicks I say that's that's per, that's preference, but if you're having you know the most basic one, I'll just keep it on three three. Um, we'll get we'll start with the uh, wide attacking mids, and as to why I have the players in the box on five now, I have both the attacking mids on getting to the box, so they'll be constantly making them runs. Um, so by having it on three, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself both your strikers to be in the box and that third attacking mid often you'll find them making the run around the back post or if they all uh, more towards you know the penalty spot for a cutback almost so having it on five i find in this formation is very effective it will never be your cd well from my experiences it's never been my cdms who end up making that run into the box so having it on that at five is very very uh, useful and i have it on basic defense support for both of them so they kind of just filter back between attack and defense so you kind of don't want them to be you know constantly dropping back when they don't need to so having it on balance you know they'll kind of just do what they feel they need to do in terms of uh, the defensive support it'll be enough to support the fullback but not enough but not even um, not deep enough even uh, to not be able to counter attack your opponent when you win the ball back or something like that so having a, it on basics very uh, very useful both the strikers getting behind to stay forward. You don't even want them filtering back. You want them to be able to try and break that um, your position's back line. Again, it depends who your strikers really are. You could always change uh, the attacking runs to maybe you know a target man if you have someone like a Pulisic or something like that up there. But 
I I usually have quick strikers who are agile and stuff in this game. That's what I find very effective. So getting behind on both of them. Uh, your two CDMs, I'd have both on balanced defence and both on stay back while attacking cover centre with normal interceptions. Um, again, this is pretty default um, in what you have on a CDM. You don't really want them pushing out to the wide areas because that will be where your cams filter back uh, to support your squad. And stay back while attacking, you don't really want them joining the attack, even though you know they will support the attack. They won't be, you know, making a forward run, you know, breaking the defence line, stuff like that, which you, which your uh, wide players, your attacking mids and your strikers will be doing. Uh, for all the defence, you have it on stay back while attacking. You don't want your full backs to join the attack at this point. Uh, you, you just want them to sit there. You want that structure behind the ball, especially that back four. Uh, so, you know, if you do get counter-attacked, they're all back there, you know, so you have that uh, defensive line as well, you know. Um, so yeah, I'd have stay back while attacking and pretty much mix everything else. Again, attacking runs you could potentially put overlap on if you find that your fullback join the attack, but they won't if you have it on stay back. Uh, so yeah, I accidentally backed out. We'll um, quickly get into the. We'll go from ultra defensive to uh, ultra attacking now. Ultra defensive. I have switched this up a bit from other formations. In other formations, I usually have long ball because you want loads of players to be getting in behind. But this is another alternative, which I find, again, effective. So you have drop back, width, I don't play about with. Depth on one, you want as many people behind the ball to just hold on to the lead in like the 85th, 90th minute. Um, so yeah, depth one for that. Possession as well. Again, width, you don't play around with players in the box one. You don't want anyone really getting into the box. You want them to be you know, ready to defend the counter-attacks. Corners and free kicks are preference, but I'll talk about why I have it on possession now. Now, keeping possession on this game is pretty easy, to be honest. It's, it's, it's too easy, essentially, is what it should be. Pressing just isn't that effective. So I having it on possession, you almost feel like you, you're having your players make these shorter runs and creating loads of these triangles for you to pass around your opponent in, just making it a lot easier to keep the ball. So if it is, again, 85th, 90th minute, you don't want to do anything silly. You can either just put long ball on and get it out there, you know, don't keep hold of it. But if you feel you you have the ability to be able to keep on to the ball and not uh, let your opponent get it, I'd definitely play possession because it, you, you'll just kill so much more time by doing it and it's so much more effective. As you can see by that little animation in the bottom uh, bottom right, just look at the triangles what uh, are created. There's so many of them, just, you know, you're, the players dropping in uh, to create them angles to be able to then pass, and then, you know, p passing in space as well. It's just very, very effective, to be honest. Instructions, now, again, fullback, stay back while attacking. You don't want them up, especially with this. Both your CDMs stay back while attacking cover centre. Again, you don't want them pushing up, especially in this uh, scenario. Both your cams, I'd have stay on the edge of the box and come back. So by having it on stay on the edge of the box, you you know they won't be making them forward runs pretty much to even try and get into the box. They will always be set up, ready to you know defend a counter attack. And come back, you'll pretty much have it almost like a 4 4 2 essentially when defending. And you have your two CDMs and your two attacking mids essentially acting as, you know, I don't know, let's say like right mid, left mid essentially when you're defending. It'll, it'll just be like a, a wall um, in front of your defence. Um, and then both your strikers again getting behind and come back. Getting behind in case you have long ball on or anything and you just want to run into the corners. It's always good to have your strikers still making them forward runs. But to, ma to make sure you know you don't always get counted or something like that. Or when, when you do get counted or something, you want your strikers to be able to fill it back and help in defence. So, you know, that it's very effective to have a uh, comeback on uh, both your strikers, you know, to just support the midfield with defending. Right then, so the defensive custom tactics... Again, I would stay on drop back. This is more if you're like, I don't know, a goal or two up or you're not so confident going into a game and you want to see how your opponent is. I'd go with this sort of custom tactic. Now, I'd have drop back, five width. Again, don't really play about of width. I'll explain why I've kind of changed the offensive width to six a bit there. On a, But yeah, the depth two, you don't want all your players behind the ball. 
you know, you know, you want it a bit deeper than you know the balanced one, but then you don't want it uh, deep like the ultra defensive. Otherwise, you won't really be able to counter attack your opponent. So have it on two, you know, it's not too deep, uh, but it's not too high up the pitch. Um, and then your offensive style, I'd keep it on balanced again. You don't really want to be trying to waste time. You want to kind of be able to attack, but you want to be able to do a bit of everything if that makes sense. So balance works well. Um, width, I put on six. Now this is again. You won't notice much of a difference, but I just find your wider players will be a bit wider when trying to counter attack, and I find width on the counter attack very very key. Uh, but you you could always keep it on five. It, it, it's preference. I just find you know being on six, I find that tiny difference. Sometimes it is in tiny margins what change games, and this is kind of one of them I find quite effective. Uh, players in the box three now you don't really want it on five because you want that cam to not always be attacking the box even though you know they, they still sometimes will uh, you don't want them consistently doing it um, so yeah you'll just have your two strikers in there to attack the ball if you do cross you know I tend to just cut it back anyway and try and work my way through I don't uh, tend to um, cross the ball in corners three three again preference when it comes to instructions on the defensive I'd have getting behind stay forward on both your strikers still even though you know you're a bit unsure I wouldn't put drop back on them otherwise you're just again pinning yourself against the wall essentially you want them to still be an outlet to uh, get forward uh, both your attacking mids I would have get into the box and come back now I know I just said about you know you don't really want them getting into the box consistently but having it on comeback you and he, despite it saying get into the box you'll, you will find that they'll only get into the box when they should get into the box if that makes sense when there's the opening and when there's space to run into you, you won't find them getting into the box if there's not space or something like that or it doesn't make sense to um, so yeah come back on defence you, again you're a bit unsure you want to figure your opponent out so you know just get nine behind the ball with your two strikers still up there and should be alright uh, both the CDMs you keep on well one of them you have stay back while attacking cover centre and the other one you, you also have to stay back while attacking cover centre but you have cut passing lanes on now this one again like I tend to say this should be your taller CDM for the cut passing lanes you'll just find them uh, making more interceptions you could always put it on conservative interceptions so that, that when they do you know go to intercept the ball it will be when it's clear but I just kind of keep it on normal because then they do sometimes go for it aggressively and when they should and then they will get the ball um, but yeah cut passing lanes I find works well on your taller one um, you know the long legs just help with intercepting it someone like an N'Golo Kante wouldn't really suit that the cut passing lanes behaviour they'd be more of the man mark um, but yeah balanced you could have or could have balanced on them it all oh, cut passing lanes even uh, but yeah you could have balance again preference I just find cut passing lanes to be quite effective both full backs I'd keep on stay back while attacking again you don't want them up the pitch at all so attacking this is say you're a goal down or you know 60th minute you want to go for it a bit more I'd have it on press on heavy touch width on five um, on both offence and defence I don't know I said it like I was American um, <laughs> Depth I'd put up to six. Now, if you're playing press on heavy touch, you don't want players uh, to be so far back, like depth three or depth uh, two. So by having it on six, six, you know your your players will just be a bit higher uh, higher up the pitch. So you know if your opponent does do a heavy touch, there'll be more players nearer to the ball to then go and press it. Whereas if you had it on deeper, you know no players are really going to be up there to press the ball. So I I would keep it on depth six uh, if you're playing this. Uh, offensive style balanced because when you regain the ball you don't just want to be throwing yourself forward by having it on fast build up so balanced again it just keeps things a lot more simple um, you know you can do your build up play you can play quick you can do a bit of everything now with width uh, again keep it the same um, players in the box this is where you know you, you want to bump it back up to five because you want that uh, attacking mid to be getting into the box for the crosses um, same reason as you know the the balanced custom tactic as to why I have it on five corners again preference but three three is probably ideal maybe even four three um, now both your full backs you still want to keep it on stay back you know you don't want to be throwing everything uh, at your opponent yet uh, so again stay back while attacking on them 
Both your CDMs, again, stay back while attacking cover center. Now, what you could do if you're feeling a bit more confident is have your left CDM on balance attack, maybe even get forward. You know, if you're getting a bit more desperate for a goal, um, that's effective as well. But stay back, you know, if it is if it is nil-nil or, you know, if it is only one nil and it's like the 50th, 60th minute until it gets like the 70th, 80th, you don't want to be throwing everything forward just yet, just in case, you know, you, you do concede again and then it's pretty much game over if your opponent just keeps the ball. For both your wide attacking mids though, the reason I keep it on stay back is because I have them on stay forward uh, and get into the box. Um, so they won't even be filtering back really to help the two CDMs out uh, when defending. So by just having your CDMs already in position with the stay back, it just makes things 10 times easier in my opinion when it comes to your defending. So yeah, stay forward, get into the box. You want them to be, you know, making them forward runs, you know, not filtering back, being there for the counter-attacks. Uh, and both your strikers, obviously, getting behind, stay forward. You don't want them filtering back with defence, especially in this formation. But also, I mean, having stay forward on both your attacking mids means if, you know, an opponent's fullback does make a heavy touch, your striker and your that sided cam will then go and press the ball together you know so it's more of a team press and also activating team pressing game is very effective with this sort of um, attacking custom tactic maybe when it gets more than the 70th minute now the ultra attacking one i'd usually you know you could always switch to another formation uh, when you really need to go for a ball uh, for the win and put constant pressure on but press after possession loss um, is another one now this is more you know 70th 80th minute you're down by one you don't want to put on constant pressure I would recommend doing it but um, this is sort of one if you don't want to you know press after possession loss width I don't like to play around with on defence especially um, but depth I'd bump it up to 8 you know you want your players as very high up the pitch you could even put it up to 9 if you want um, but you want your players high at the pitch, ready to press the ball as soon as you lose it, as well as you know being able to just you know try and squeeze your opponent essentially into their own half. Uh, you don't really want anyone dropping back, as especially when you're going for a win. Now, fast build up, you just want to try and get as many chances for um, for a goal as possible. So by getting loads of players forward, you know, quickly doing it, trying to break your opponent down quickly, you know, force your opponent to make mistakes in defence. So that's why I. Uh, use fast build up width now this is where i bump it up because what i uh what as you'll see by the instructions uh the full backs will be now joining the attack so you want them to be able to make the overlapping runs out wide instead of more you know having your attacking mids more infield and then your your full back making the run out wide you know so then the attacking mid can support the full back if they get into like a 2v1 or 1v1 uh, or to create a 2v1 situation even against the opposition um, players in the box, you want loads in the box. You know, I, I I have it on nine here. You could have eight if you want. If you want someone to still be on the edge, but by having nine, you pretty much have your two strikers, your two CDMs, and um, you know the yeah, your two strikers, two CDMs, and the opposite attacking mid, or you know you might have two CDM, no two strikers, two attacking mids, and your opposite fullback even or one CDM. You'll just see through the game corners though again preference if you're really going for it put it on five free kicks in i don't really think free i don't really see uh i've personally haven't scored from whipping um the ball into the box for from a free kick and i played like over th like 300 games over 300 games something like that now still haven't scored one of them um but for the custom tactics what i'd use is getting behind stay forward obviously on both your strikers Stay forward, get into the box on both your attacking mids. Now, one thing you also could do for these, uh, put on aggressive interceptions, but that's more if you're doing a constant press, in my opinion. For something like a press after possession loss, normal interceptions is a bit better, in my opinion. Uh, for your CDMs, you pretty much want your right CDM to just be balanced all over cover centre. They will filter between attack and defence that way. Whereas for your other CDM, you want get forward. Now this again is your taller one. This this role is perfect for like a Paul Pogba in my opinion. Uh, you want them to be getting forward, you know, joining the attack, but still, you know, covering centre if they are back in, on uh, defence. Now your full backs, like I said before, you want them to join the attack and you want their run type to be on overlap because the attacking mid isn't technically a wide player. 
um, they will often tend to filter in towards the inside of the pitch a little bit more uh, than what you'll find. Um, so having the width on higher means they'll be a bit further out wide and then having the overlap on your fullback will mean that attacking mid will support the fullback, like I said earlier, to create 2v1s and stuff like that. So having that on, again, effective in my opinion. Um, but yeah, they were the custom tactics. As per usual, um, I will jump into some players who kind of suit this sort of formation. Again, I won't be doing centre backs or goalkeeper. They're kind of you know self-explanatory. However, I might be doing a video in the future on good centre backs and goalkeepers in this game for all sorts of price ranges. Um, but it, again, centre backs don't really matter unless you're using in term. Well, they do obviously matter. But what I'm trying to say is they're all pretty standard. You know, default. You know, you know kind of the certain players who work in these positions. Even though you know a lot of the players in these sort of roles have probably been in uh, other videos as well. Um, you know, it's easier to break down and explain, you know, their type of role a bit easier than, you know, centre back, they're just, you know, they'll, they'll just be defending. Whereas your full back, uh, most of the time they'll be defending, but, you know, for that last one, they will join in the attack, uh, for an example. So we'll get into the full backs in just a sec. So here's some of the full backs on the bench. I've got right backs on the pitch, I've got the left backs. Again, a lot of these you'll probably, you know, you already know are very good full backs like Carl Walker, Jal Cancelo. You know, Samedo, Wan-Bissaka is just fantastic. Um, I've got his one to watch there. But yeah, these are some of the right backs. Again, key stats really um, are your agility, your balance. Obviously, defending stats, you need to have semi-decent ones. They need to be quick. Uh, defensive awareness as well. You know, obviously, if they're, you know, getting drawn in towards the centre-back to support them and then someone else runs out wide, if they have good defensive awareness, they'll be... Uh, better suited to then you know notice that player running and then you know go and cover the run essentially if that makes sense so some of the ones like i was saying walker jal cancelo uh, florenzi samedo this ruben pina is very good for it uh you know cheap mal i think that's how you say it i'm not too sure uh, again another very solid fullback fairly cheap Klosterman, you know, all of these are pretty good right backs. Same goes for left backs in terms of what you're looking for. So, you know, Robertson, Jordi Alba, Sandro, Tellez. Uh, I'll just quickly flick through them um, as to sort of, you know, the, the ones I'd recommend using for this sort of formation. Um, but yeah, very, very good full backs, all of these here. And they are well suited to that sort of role, especially, you know, if you do need, then need to go for a goal and you know, you want your fullbacks to join the attack, I'd recommend, you know, these sorts of fullbacks as they're effective at pretty much getting forward and helping out with the attack. Um, we'll move on to the CDMs now. These are probably going to be similar to the 4 2 3 one type of CDMs. I'll try and switch up, you know, but as per usual, I try and keep it so I have some top tier, you know, fullbacks in, in terms of your Walker and Jalcon Cello, who cost quite a bit, but also, you know, your kind of cheapish ones, you know, like Ruben Penner, Malcoy, Klosterman, uh, Audrey Zola, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, you know who who are more affordable essentially. So yeah, we'll get into the CDMs now. Now here is the CDMs I'd recommend using for this sort of you know squad. Now obviously I know there's a lot here. I'll go through a few. You know Kante, Matuidi, Fabinho, Rodri, Witzel, Delaney. That that would be a great partnership. Ndidi, obviously he's got an informed card now. What looks very very uh, nice. It's Jabamin, Amadou, you know, Tiago Mendes, Torreira, Thomas Partey, Wijnaldum, obviously you got Pogba, uh, Roy Keane, you know, uh, De Jong, players like that, you know. Obviously, I'd have your left CDM as you were. I mean, it's more towards your preference. If your left CDM needs to be your taller one or more attacking one, preferably um, they'll be both tall and attacking, a bit like a Pogba. But, you know, I, I tend to use Patrick Vieira in this left CDM sort of role. And he works well. You know, he obviously hasn't got the best uh, attacking stats. But, you know, that's just an example of someone like maybe a Witzel might be. You know, he's got solid all-round attacking stats. Or maybe a Rodri, if you're going to pair him up with like a Torreira or something like that. Then Rodri would be more suited to that left CDM role. Um, but, yeah, here's just a bunch of examples again for your CDMs. Uh, we'll move on to the wide attacking mids before we move on to the strikers. I'd forgot to mention for CDM some of the key stats, and I've obviously got an attacking mid here, but the key stats you really want to look out for are, you know, they need to have a bit of solid pace, 
um, you know, decent enough agility and balance. I'd say 60s is kind of the minimum. Uh, obviously, good defending, good defensive awareness and stuff, and obviously solid physical stats. But we've moved on to the uh, attacking mids now. Here are just some examples now. With the attacking mids, the stats you want to look out for, obviously, I need to have decent-ish pace. Um, someone like a De Bruyne isn't as suited because the main stats you really need are pace and agility or pace, agility and balance and decent dribbling. Obviously, De Bruyne's dribbling stats are very good, but he hasn't got the best agility and balance. So he, he won't feel the quickest on the wing. Essentially, these are kind of like wingers, so you need them to have a bit of, you know, pace or agility and stuff about that or sank about them like that. So you've got like Royce, Dybala, uh, Coutinho, Havertz, this Alejandro Gomez, who's a very, very good card, especially for this sort of role. Um, this Akone, uh, Tyson, Brandt, um, Munayin, Grealish. I know he's obviously not the quickest, but he's got pretty good dribbling stats, especially his agility and balance for this sort of role that he'd be decent. This Boetius, I think, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Harrit in his Zar Zarcho, I think. Again, another pretty solid player. Um, again, like I was saying, they just basically need to be more attacking minded players with a uh, good pace and good agility and balance obviously like a, a brand here he ha he isn't the quickest he hasn't got the best you know agility and balance but he's got a solid all-round card uh good enough agility and balance and good enough pace to be able to play this sort of role so they're the attacking mids i'd recommend using in this sort of formation obviously there are more out there but these are the sort of ones i'd recommend uh we'll move on to the strikers now before we wrap up the video so finishing up with the strikers, there are a lot of these who obviously can play in the attacking mid, you know, like a Lucas Moura, a Zaha, a Depay, but they can also play in the strikers. Should also be noted, you know, obviously uh, you can have wingers play in these sort of roles. Um, you know, obviously your left wing, your right wing, like Leroy Sane as a cam and stuff like that. But uh, for these sorts of videos, I like to have it, you know, in case you start with a four triple two. And then, you know, you can go straight into it without having to change formation in game and stuff like that using the custom tactics. So you have all five. Um, but yeah, here are some of the strikers. We've got Ben Yedder, Rodrigo, Werner, Rashford, Anaki Williams, Rebic, Vardy. Uh, I've been saying it wrong. It's Bakambu. I thought it was, I always thought it was Bakaman, Bakamambu. I don't know. Bakambu, um, Malin, Muriel, Alex Texiera, Bamiang, Lacazette. Mbappe, King, Mora, Zaha, Depay, Mertens, Insigne, Son, Griezmann, and obviously there's many more out there. Um, key stats you want, really to, want to look uh, out for really are agility and balance. They need to be pretty high. Um, pace is obviously key, um, especially with the getting behind on your strikers. And obviously shooting, you want them to have good finishing stats. Also, it's always nice to have you know like a four-star weak foot, but if it's a three-star like Griezmann, you know he's still he's good enough to you know obviously play. Is he's got f uh, fantastic finishing stats and stuff like that. So yeah, they're sort of the stats you, you kind of want to look out for. Uh, again, I've tried to provide a wide range of players, you know, from all sorts of different leagues, nations, and you know stuff like that. Um, price ranges, all sorts. Um, and like I said, there's obviously a lot more strikers out there and some of these can they're players that you're wide attacking mids if you wanted to, like maybe especially like an Insigne or Mertens, they're very, very well suited to them sort of roles. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, do leave a like. Again, comment any your thoughts on this sort of, you know, 4 triple two formation review and stuff like that and any, you know, sort of videos you want me to do. Uh, subscribe if you are new and I'll catch you soon.